Hello everyone, and welcome to the Criterion Connection. I'm Wade. And I'm Scott. And we are back, because uh, last time I think you were on the show, we did a little movie called Blood for Dracula. And it was awesome. Yes. So, because they announced it, we did a Vinegar Syndrome release, Flesh for Frankenstein. We watched uh, the 4K uh, edition, and we also watched the 3D version, which is why we're wearing the glasses. Right. It's well, this nice little set. It's well, we wanted to do something fun, like the Blood for Dracula review, but since there wasn't really anything we could cling to from this movie as a gimmick, at least not on short notice, we thought, what the hell, just wear the glasses. Well... The glasses are pretty cool. I mean, I guess we could all just be naked. Yeah, with like little, little bits of blood like yeah. right around our boobs. <clears throat> so this movie actually came out a year before uh, Blood for Dracula, made by Paul Morrissey, uh, produced by Andy Warhol, starring Udo Kier still. Really everybody, <clears throat> pretty much everybody from Blood for Dracula is in Flesh for Frankenstein. Yes. Or I guess if you want to be technical for the people who are saying, well actually the one came first. Yes, I guess technically you could say the Cast, most of the cast from Flesh for Frankenstein is in Blood for Dracula. Uh, and, you know, Udo Kier is accents very strong. He's just as weird. <clears throat> just as weird. I think he's more weird in this one. In Blood for Dracula, he was kind of... I mean, he was weird, but he was more reserved because he was more reserved kind of character. But that's not even fair because, like, everybody's weird in this movie. Yeah. Even um, Otto, who um, plays... Um, was he Renfield? Or, like, the Renfield-esque character? Cause yes. I don't even think... I don't remember what his name. That's one of my only problems with both of these movies is I only remember Otto because it's easy to remember. It's an, just an easy name to remember. But I don't remember a lot of characters from these movies. There's the Baron and there's Katrin and there's two kids. Well, right, but if you tried to ask me what their character's name was, I couldn't tell you. So basically, you've heard the tale of Frankenstein, the, the classic Mary Shelley um, tale. Um, this is not that. Uh, Mary Shelley had absolutely nothing to do with any... Any bit maybe, of this. maybe the name, maybe the idea of raising the dead, but uh, this is whole idea is like he wants to raise a, a sort of master race. I guess. Okay, okay, okay. Let me let, let me see if I can do this one because you always you're always the synopsis guy. Let me try this one. Okay, so the vibe I got from this movie is okay. So the doc or the Baron, excuse me, the Baron is married to his sister. And they have kids, but it's not... Even though the the son looks exactly like the Baron, I don't know if they're actually his kids, if they're the spawn of someone else, because he's obsessed with making these two monsters to have sex with each other. Zombies. To create zombies, thank you. To, to create this new race of children for him. But he has children. And... And clearly, and, and throughout the movie, you can clearly tell the children want to follow in his footsteps anyway. I, th I think it's more of the idea of he wants his children to have good nozzles. I uh, thought their nozzles were pretty fine. He was obsessed with uh, they were okay. getting the perfect nose, which is funny because there's actually a grindcore band. I know, we're not fans of grindcore, but... I like during, some. During our research, we found a band called Nozzle, and they named their band out of this movie. So that was a little fun little thing. But anyway, there's a lot of... Um, blood, there's a lot of boobs, there's a lot of hair. Uh, it's got the guy who had all the sex in Blood for Dracula. Yeah, He's the guy back. Yeah, the guy who wanted to uh, force himself, we'll use that word, uh, on an underage girl is now playing our hero? He was kind of the hero in Blood for Dracula. Well, yeah, but at least like in Blood for Dracula, like he had some kind of like goodness to like actual goodness to him except for the whole thing with the girl yeah but like in this one it's just kind of like he's just kind of there like the only reason he doesn't he's even has a problem with any of this is because they use his friend's head yes his friend the monk uh there's a whole it's hard i don't really want to go too deep into the plot because i mean this is like blood for dracula. there isn't a plot you can't go deep into the plot there really isn't one uh, blood for dracula it's just a time part time movie. It's just that you gotta watch it to kind of you know deal with it. the more I the like the more I was watching this movie, the more I realized they're kind in a way they're kind of the same movie just from different perspectives. It was almost like they wanted to know they had one idea for a for a movie, and then we're like, okay, how would we do it as Frankenstein, and how would we do it as Dracula? 
And because they're both pretty much about you got the doctor and or the Baron and his assistant, or in Dracula you got Dracula and Renfield. They're both on some kind of mission to find the right people for the for the thing that he needs to do that involves blood. Like, there's more to it that I'm willing to get well, into because I don't know how to properly articulate what I want to say. Uh, yeah, but there, I did notice some similarities. Also, I, I, I was very confused by some of the logic, because like, usually in a Frankenstein story, they're about getting the brain, but this one, he's obsessed with the nose no, 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 and the no, head. No, no. no he's, he was concerned about the brain. But, he, it, but, he, he, but wanted, he needed the he, head. No, he wanted the brain. How I, how I figured it out was, it was two birds, one stone. He got the perfect brain with the perfect nose. Uh, but he thought it was the perfect brain because he wanted something that has a high libido. Turns the wrong person. Uh, but that seems kind of weird to me because it's like he w he wants this person for something specific. It's just you would think that he would be a little bit more particular and like, n you know, go for a specific brain I think, and then get ahead. I think we s discussed it, Scott, that they, during the movie, that they weren't uh, a well-oiled team. They were just a couple guys that just got really drunk. Like, hey, yeah. you want to get, you want to reanimate two bodies and have them have sex? Hopefully yeah. Be funny. Yeah, it's like most of the, most track, or most Frankenstein movies, it's like you've got the doctor, the clear doctor, the genius, they know what they're doing, you have the assistant, and the doctor does the work, assistant assists. This one, I don't think either of them knew what the hell they were doing and were just kind of like, Yo, you want to do this? Alright. Kiss him. <laughs> uh, before we talk about, like, the transfer, uh, there's a scene involving a gallbladder that is <laughs> probably my favorite. Maybe one of my favorite. This is what makes the movie worth watching. I mean, the dude... Oh, God. For, uh, spoiler, uh, Baron Frankenstein decides to stick his hand in the girl's incision and... I think it's implied his, he, that he used kinda more dry, than his hand, he's but... He's kind of dry humping, but then he's like, to, to, to stop death, you have to F life. No, to no death. To no death, you have to F life in the gallbladder. He didn't say F, you know, he said the word. Fuck, there we go. I'm trying to this, I'm trying to make this a classy episode, but it's kind of hard with this movie. I didn't force you to say it. Yeah. It, it's a movie, uh, the transfer is interesting... Um, I, I don't know the logistics of it, because this may this movie may have been shot for 3D. Yeah, because yeah. Because if you watch the 4K transfer, even the Blu-ray transfer, because we had to switch it up a little bit, because we were kind of like, what's going on? Well, and we wanted to kind of see the differences. Yeah, they popped up that saturation to where, like, a lot of people's faces are red. Yeah, like that. the colors know. were very colorful. I don't know if it's because they shot in 3D. I'm not 100% sure. But it got, it got better... I will say what makes the movie work is, aside from the weirdness, is the the set design is great. Yeah. So if you liked, and if you saw Blood for Dracula first and you liked a lot of the sets from that movie, well, guess <laughs> what? They were used in both of them. I got really excited. You saw me get excited when I was like, it's the bathroom! Yeah! It's wait, the iconic bathroom! It, yeah. Well, yeah. It was like, look, dude, it's the iconic bathroom from Blood for Dracula. I was like, which one? He's like, the one where he pukes blood everywhere. I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh... We did watch the 3D, and there was a lot of things with the 3D, like the gecko. A lot of things made sense, because when you watch it without it, yeah. you're curious, like, why did they do that? Why did they do that? Because it's not as... I will give this movie credit. A lot of stuff that they did for 3D wasn't as obvious as other movies, but once you put the glasses on, it makes sense. Like, with certain angles, positions... The climax with the... the flag? That was one of the... Old, that was the only thing I that made me go, oh yeah, that's right, this was filmed for 3D. Also, butts. La, oh yeah, three, three-dimensional butt, dude butts just in your face. Yeah, um... If that's what you're into, this is the movie for you. But the only downside with the 3D was, which was interesting, is on the non-3D versions, the color saturation was very high on the 4K, and it was still co somewhat colorful on the regular Blu-ray, but when you put on the 3D glasses, by the nature of like the red and blue, you lose all that color that they popped up in the 4K. Yeah. So, I, 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 I guess in one sense, like, you know, you had to... I think they were more like they had to fix the 4K version. Right. Um, but for like, I forget how much I paid for it, but it's a pretty good set. I mean, it's a cool-looking set. It's right. got 
They're all slip cases, which I really like. And you pointed out to me that I didn't know was even a thing anymore. Uh, you point out that the 3D is meant for uh, with the glasses like these and for uh, 3D TV. So yes. if you got the ones, those are the ones where it's the clear glasses, right? Yes. Yeah. So if you, if that's the style you prefer, you can do the 3D that way as well. And I know. We're so you probably don't lose as much color as we did with the red and blues. And it's funny that we're doing the Criterion Connection. Uh, we're doing some Criterion Collection movies, but this is a Vinegar Syndrome release. But this is fine number 27. Right. Criterion. I was going to say, it counts. It does count. And uh, we're we not sponsored by Vinegar Syndrome. But I thought it was a nice little, um, nice little transfer for Vinegar Syndrome. I mean, this is perfect for their catalog. Because they, they like to do like a lot of schlock. Right. They like to do a lot of schlock. Um, which I have a good amount of schlock, I noticed. Um, now, before, now, I want to ask you something. Because mm -hmm. we kind of discussed that first. But we didn't really think about like being shot for 3D or whatever. Do you, who do you think did the better job with their respective movies? Do you think Vinegar Syndrome did a better job with Flesh for Frankenstein? Or do you think Severin Films did a better job with Blood for Dracula? It's really tough. It's really tough to say because I don't know the situation for Flesh for Frankenstein or Blood for Dracula. I think based on just picture quality alone, Blood for Dracula was the better one. I agree. But... Like I said, that movie was not shot for 3D, so that might be that might be the deciding factor. I'm so. gonna be honest with you. I even though I do agree with you on that end for uh, Blood for Dracula, I actually think uh, Flesh for Frankenstein is the better value because again, you get two different versions of 3D, you get two different versions of picture qu uh, picture quality, yes. which uh, not just as far as like how it looks on your TV. Or anything, but also as we mentioned, the color, you know, the colors different, awesome. and well, audio is great too, and the audio is really good too. Yeah. I just feel like you get more versions. So if you want a more colorful presentation, if you want a more subdued presentation, if you want, you know, red and blue 3D, if you want uh, 3D television presentation, uh, I think it's. I think you get more value. I think you get more for your money with that yeah. one. Actually, would you recommend Flesh for Frankenstein to the general audience? I don't recommend it to the general audience, <laughs> but I do recommend it as a curiosity. As I said for Blood for Dracula, this is a curiosity film. This is something you watch. Th this is this is one of those movies where it's like you watch it because you heard about it. The word of mouth gets you. Like the room, or right. Um, I think if I, I'll say this, if 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 you already saw Blood for Dracula, I think this is this is where worth your time I say if you watch uh, this is definitely if you're just in, curious watch it and as and if you aren't uh, offended by what you watch and haven't seen Blood for Dracula watch that one I think you'll get a much better experience with that one but I think this is a good um, a good um, gateway to the weirdness of the next of the other movie if you like B-movie schlock yes right, right. Like, I recommend the movie as well Hey, quick thought. Let's say they kept this going and did like Gilman, The Mummy. What would you call those ones? Because you got Flesh for Frankenstein, you got Blood for Dracula. Scales for Gilman. And I guess Gauze for Mummy? Uh, the, uh, the Gall of the Mummy. Um, and then Hairball of with the Wolfman. Fur for Wolfman. Fur for Wolfman, there you go. Yeah, I really think they should have went... And The Invisible Man. V visibility for the Invisible Man. There you go. See, they really should have went all the way with this Warhol universe. Yes. The Warhol-verse. <laughs> That's about it. So, until next time, I'm Wade. I'm Scott. And we'll see you later.